every hand is different. <laughs> That's what makes part of the handgun market so massive is what works for one hand might not work for the other. That's also what makes SIG's fire control unit so exciting is now you can like the gun and change the grip without too much hassle. I want to go over some different grip modules and some of the notice things I've noticed with them in my journey so far playing with the SIG P320. Coming up next on GB Guns. We recently reviewed the SIG P320 X Compact and found it absolutely delightful to shoot despite being a sub 4 inch barreled 9mm striker fire gun. Usually once you get under 4 inches not only are you losing the optimal velocity for that round but things get snappy and SIG did something with this grip module that and the springs just the way the whole gun works that it shot very very nicely but since it's part of the FCU family the fire control unit for those of you who don't know this is the serialized part this is the firearm that's the only part that is controlled that requires background checks etc etc and it's very easy to remove and install onto these grip modules, which can be had for $40, sometimes as low as I bought this guy for $9. <laughs> this is a throwaway of a subcompact model, uh, just so I could try it. I was like, hey, why not? For 10 bucks plus shipping, let's do it. But SIG will sell you the regular ones for about 40 bucks, and there's lots of aftermarket popping up all over the place. One of those aftermarket companies uh, that we've been showing a lot here on the channel, because they're local to us, is Icarus Precision, and they're making these out of aluminum, which adds some nice weight and also allows, since it's CNC machined, uh, for some pretty complex shapes and really nice features. Uh, we've got a lot of coverage on these guys already. This grip module for the 320 we have not shot yet, uh, but it just feels nice. like that it had that double undercut so that my support hand can get up real high and uh, just had a good heft to it. But when I first started showing this and additionally in the original 320 videos a lot of you guys mentioned Wilson Combat. So I picked up one of these grip modules from them. Thank you patrons for supporting the channel and making us able to do this. And you'll see it's got some cuts in the back here to install some tungsten weights that it comes with adding extra weight. And I was really curious what's the weight of this empty versus the factory SIG, versus the Icarus Precision all aluminum, and what is the weight of this with those tungsten rods installed, and how would it feel? And as I was just kind of playing around with it, I noticed the, uh, the grip feel is certainly different on this Wilson Combat, and a lot of you had commented that you really like this, and you got this, and uh, went with it. These, I believe, were around 80 bucks. Um, so not cheap, but not expensive either to transform your gun. And in feeling how different it was, I grabbed the factory one and the Icarus and started putting them side by side and looking at what's different and what's similar. And I'm hoping that on camera here today I can show you guys what's changed here and help, you, help guide you in the direction for what you think might work for you. Now of course the Catch-22 on this, just like in the article I put on GB Guns Depot about uh, my lessons with budget guns is it's kind of one of those things that you have to try to know what works for you But some of you might already have an idea or at least might know what you wish you had in your gun And maybe between these three we can figure out what's gonna work best for you so before we get into the Hand fit and shapes I wanted to go over weight since that's probably something that people are going to want to know about weight in the grip module is non-reciprocating, obviously. That's the slide doing the work. And the heavier the gun is down here, typically the more it kind of feels like an anchor in the hand, which I find very comfortable. It helps soak up some of the recoil and just makes for a softer shooting experience, in my opinion. So here is the SIG X Compact, and I'm realizing that with glare, you're probably not gonna be able to see that. 3.1 ounces. The Wilson model, without the tungsten weights installed, 3.2 ounces. And keep in mind, this is a cheap kitchen scale <laughs> that has been used and abused, so it may not be the most accurate. We'll drop these three tungsten rods in. Now we're up to 4.7 ounces. So you can see we've got 
a decent amount of weight increase. What about a solid aluminum piece from Icarus Precision? Now we're at 6.7 ounces, so obviously the aluminum is going to be heavier than putting tungsten into polymer. Are you going to feel a difference going from factory to Wilson Combat with the tungsten? Yes. There's, there's, in fact, just holding them here, I can definitely tell that this is heavier, but that's not going to beat something that's solid aluminum like this one. Aside from weight change, what you're getting when you go with something like the Icarus Precision or the Wilson Combat is a different fit to the hand. The contours are different, even some of the dimensions are different. Without busting out the calipers <laughs> and getting really boring measuring all these things, to give you guys measurements that may or may not make any sense to you compared to what you have currently or you've experienced before, I'm going to try to do this visually and just show you the differences in contours. One way that I can do this fairly is lining them up and trying to give you some true visual. What we have is the X model from SIG, the Wilson Combat, and the Icarus Precision in that order. And if you look at the protrusion of the magazine release, how much space is sticking out here, you can see that there's a lot more mag release exposed, and yes, it's the same on the top and behind. Showing you the bottom is just the easiest way to do it. And more on the Icarus. The most, however, is on this guy, the Wilson, which is because there is a lot of slimming. The Wilson is now on your left, and you see the SIG model stays kind of broad all the way down, and there is some definite contour. If I come in an angle here, you can see the relief here on the Wilson model versus the obvious flats of the SIG factory model. The Icarus Precision has slimming but has maintained this width all the way down to the magazine release level. So you've got um, an easier reach to the trigger but not necessarily a thinner grip where your hand is. The Wilson does the same thing with an easier reach to the trigger, but this openness here sets your thumb right at the magazine release, making it very easy to get to. This is probably would be a preferred option for those with shorter thumbs or smaller hands that normally have to break their grip to rotate to push the magazine release. Because my double XL glove hands sit beyond the magazine release here. On the Icarus, I'm beyond, but the magazine release is a little bit shielded, so this is probably more practical for carry or competition, maybe uh, somewhere. If you're one of those people who's afraid of your magazine release being bumped, this might be a better option. And the factory SIG, of course, with the least pr protrusion, is has actually got some reach. You have to reach beyond this curve of the grip to get to the magazine release. Now, on the packaging of the Wilson Combat, uh, module, there's a lot of claims, some of which may have been true before the X series, I don't know, um, or, you know, just in comparison to the classic line, I'm not sure, um, but I found some of what they're saying to apply and some of it to not apply, so let's take a look at some of those features. Now this is getting a, a little bit weird, but what I'm doing to try to be as objective as possible is the camera's going to remain in the same position and I'm using a scratch on my case here and this line to put all these in the exact same position as we go through these features. Uh, the first mention is an upgraded high cut 1911 style beaver tail grip tang for smooth draws. So they're talking about here. So this is a classic SIG 320 design. Hopefully these fades will work and you'll get visual magic being able to see an overlay of how they're different. This is the, the X compact grip module that came on the gun and the Icarus Precision Grip Module's Tang. Why does that make a difference? Well, the higher this is cut, the lower the gun can sit in your hand, which greatly helps with controlling recoil. Uh, also, you might have noticed as the shape here changes between these different modules, um, that's going to dictate potentially your length of pull to the trigger, how well your finger can reach that trigger. Go back and rewatch that fade over if you want to see it Next one more up. time. And once again, I'm using that scratch there to line up with the edge of this cut so we make sure we get the grip in the same spot each time. Uh, the, the next feature is an undercut and radiusing of the trigger guard. This affects how low the gun can sit in your hand because the lower this is, the lower it pushes your hand and the higher the gun ends up in your hand. So, lining this up, this is our classic 
320 cutout. Now the grip module that comes on the X Compact from SIG. The Wilson Combat module. You might also notice a difference in the material left below the magazine release. The magazine release has to be in the same spot on all of them because it's in the same spot on the magazines. So that can't move. They just have to work around it. And here is our Icarus Precision module. What do you guys think? Which one looks higher or deeper? Is this important to you or not? Let me know in the comments below. Another part are frame reference serrations for support hand and thumb index finger positioning. What they're talking about is somewhere for your trigger finger to rest and know and feel and for you to have your support thumb to know you're holding the gun the exact same way in the same spot shot after shot. This older factory SIG model is slick and although there's a ledge here that drops down there's nothing to prevent that flip. Usually driving in good pressure here helps reduce that rotation and reduce muzzle flip. On the X Compact we don't have any serrations there whatsoever. There is an actual rail which is nice and what I've found myself doing is shoving my thumb into the gap of that rail assuming you don't have a light on there. Now it's not necessarily comfortable and you've got a small surface area of thumb trying to fight that flip but it can be enough at least when you're shooting let's say one to two hundred rounds. It's not something I'd want to do all day because that pressure will eventually cause some bruising in the thumb. And so here is our Wilson Combat Module and there you can see the serrations. For me they're a bit too far for my trigger finger. I, it looks like I'm on there I can see them, but I can't feel them. And on this side, my thumb can certainly get there. They're angled correctly. They're just not quite deep enough to provide any traction. So with this guy, I would be shoving my finger in that rail slot again. On our Icarus module, we don't have serrations at all, but we do have these nice deep cuts. And those, my trigger finger can find and feel and my thumb can either dig in there, which is pretty deep, or down in this non-railed, this end of the rail section here, how it comes back a little bit deeper even though there's no space there. That's a good deep spot. So that works for me, but once again, that's a limited application, a uh, couple hundred rounds, and you're gonna have a bruised thumb or uh, get a little, little tender there. So none of these are really providing much there. That, however, I think is a feature that is mostly gone after by really, really serious shooters who are probably gonna do more modifications beyond just what's here. Another feature mentioned is an enlarged integrated magwell opening for fast reloads, compatible with the latest generation of 6R X-Series factory base pads. I believe that because my mags fit. But as far as it being an actual magwell, you can see I've got these three together and as I rotate them together, what they've done is put a tail on the gun. Um, that is great for indexing during the reload, as I like to do, slamming the mag back against something to then feed in, which neither the factory model nor this version of the Icarus has. However, as far as it being an actual mag well, there's not a lot of change there. It looks like we've got a little more angle here than the factory SIG. Um, and more than the Icarus, but you notice the Icarus has thinner walls. That's because it being aluminum can be thinner, and so that's, I suspect, a little more open inside there to get a magazine in. Which is right for you, depends on your situation. Uh, funnel with a tight fit is good with clean mags. Running dirty mags, maybe it's got some grime on it, some dust, uh, you dropped it in the mud kind of thing and you're shoving it in there. That's when having a little extra space makes a difference. The last difference that I wanted you guys to see that maybe you can reflect on based on your experience and what you've liked and didn't like shooting other guns is the roundness of the back strap. So we've got an old factory SIG, uh, the X Compact, the Wilson, and the Icarus. And as I bring these around, you'll see the back strap on the old SIG is very rounded, a little bit flatter on the X Compact quite rounded uh, and a bit of a point on the Wilson and then more squared off on the Icarus Precision. So light hits it, maybe you guys can see it. Hope you can. What that tends to do is determine is this butting up against your hand or 
peeking into the fold of your hand. And that's really gonna come down to personal preference and how your hand fits. It's not really something that I can put a measurement on or give you a yay or nay as to which one is better. It's gonna come down to your hand and the gun. Um, just like the whole purpose of this video uh, is celebrating and showing off that there are these options out here. Um, and it's so easy to change on the 320 depending on what you like. This feel to me feels very much like a slimmer gun and that slimmer guns tend to kind of point into my hand uh, rather than rest against it like a larger broader gun would, which this group module does. The total surface area you have back here against your hand is part of how you interpret perceived recoil. Um, that's, that's part of what's pushing back against your hand. It's not that you'd think that broader flatter is always better, but really it has to do with how your hand cups around the gun. So if you're trying to decide between two upgrades or even two factory SIG options, uh, what you need to do is think about what you've got, what you have experience with and how it felt, and then choose one based on what you think you want to go with. But it's interesting to see these two, like the Icarus and the X-Line seem to have a lot of shared commonalities and the Wilson and the Classic Sig Line seem to have a lot of commonalities in general shape and yet all four of these are completely different. The good news is it's rather inexpensive to try them. The aluminum of course costs more. This is CNC machine, machine from a block. We've got videos on that versus these are just squirted into a mold. So of course they're a whole lot cheaper to make which means cheaper to buy. Which one of these do I like best? Well, I haven't tried them all yet, uh, but I wanted to get this out there and get you guys thinking and hear from you guys. Like for all of you who were champions of the Wilson Combat Module, is it just that it was an upgrade from the SIG line that made you like it? Or are your hands reaching and fitting better with this than they did before? If you've tried this and liked this, have you also tried the X series module and what did you think of it? Because I think these are two um, of the more affordable options that are slightly different than some of the older SIG designs uh, without committing all the way to an aluminum module. That's it, just wanted to start a conversation and hear from you guys because really there is no right or wrong answer. It's all about hand size and fitment, what you think works for you, um, what you know works for you, or what you know doesn't work for you. Let us know in the comments below. Let's start a conversation. I'd love to see uh, what your experiences have been. Thanks for watching.